Hi, how are you? Hi, Dan. Good to see you again. Question, Mr. Yes, please. No, I think we had a good meeting. Uh, uh, we need to get the results from the election soon um, and finalize that process. And then there will be important decision to be made by a future president. We need a government that is competent and can consolidate the support of the international community. And then also I must say um, I paid tribute to, uh, to the uh, assessment having been made by General McChrystal. I think that he really responds to some of the requirements that we have also been, been emphasizing over the last months to get closer to the people, to demonstrate greater sensitivity to the cultural environment. Uh, so I must really say that uh, I think that's a huge step in the right direction. I also said in the Council we need some tough decisions on the economic development side. I think we're doing too little of too many things. We have to focus. If not, uh, the end result will be that much of what we're doing today in a few years will prove to be unsustainable. We, we have to really start to build the Afghan economy. Uh, we, we haven't gotten to that point yet. So, uh, as you know, aid bureaucracies are among the slowest bureaucracies in the world to change around. Uh, I would like to meet now ministers of development to talk to them how we can consolidate and, and change our efforts in Afghanistan to create real economic growth. I, I have two questions, Mr. Ida. One is you pay tribute to the Mr. McChrystal report, but you haven't expressed a position on more troops, which seems to be yeah. the most important single question in the next Busy. few weeks. Um, does your paying tribute to Mr. McChrystal reports imply that you actually support his conclusions about the need for more foreign troops in well, Afghanistan? He doesn't, he doesn't specify his requirements, but I think that more troops certainly is needed, particularly to do one thing. We need, we need to build up the Afghan security forces quickly, uh, both the army and the police. That will, n n by necessity, need more troops, not only for the training, but also for the mentoring in the field. It's quite inevitable. Uh, beyond that, I do not want to comment, but I think it's important to get the Afghan army and the police up and running stronger as soon as we possibly can. That needs on, that's not the only need for manpower, but if you see how they are equipped, uh, it's quite obvious that they need better equipment, better weapons and better incentives in order to be able to reduce also the attrition rate that we see today, 20-25% for the police, that's completely unacceptable. And it's a question primarily, I think, of equipment, of uh, weapons and, and training. And let me add to that, it, it cannot be an only U.S. effort. I spoke to the European defense ministers by video conference this, uh, this morning. They are in Sweden meeting there, and the Europeans also have to play a much larger part in that whole training effort and building up the army and the police than they have done so far. Uh, Norway is among the European countries that certainly can do more also. Even if I'm Norwegian, there's no... <laughs> yeah, but the foreign minister just said there it's out of the question to send more... Uh... But you see, many ministers say things that I have to disagree with, and uh, there are, they are, they are few. There are not many countries who volunteer, but there are many who should do more. That includes many European countries who have the capacity, particularly on the police side, where we have been modest, the Europeans as such, been modest for a long time, and we have to shape up to the challenge. Um, a few weeks ago, um, the UN announced that you would be here to address the Security Council with Peter Galbraith. He seems to be notably absent today. Is he, is he, are you, do you still have full confidence in him? Will he continue to work with you? Is he still going to return to Afghanistan and re resume his duties as the Deputy Special Rep underneath you? Let me say one thing. I've been to the Security Council now five or six times in my current capacity. I never brought my deputy with me. I delivered a statement, uh, period. Uh, and he was here last week. He is now in Vermont, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and uh, all further questions on... Uh, on uh, this has to be referred to the Secretary General. So you're unable to say whether he will resume his duties uh, in Afghanistan? I refer all such questions to the Secretary General who has appointed him. Thank you. Vermont on this trip? Sorry? Have you ever been there? It's a beautiful land. It's a beautiful place, yes. Are you going to the farm? I have to, re to return to Kabul tonight.
I see. Yeah. Is he on duty in, in his farm in Vermont? Yes, yes. yes. He's on duty in his farm in he's, Vermont. Uh, he's, on, he's on the UN payroll. Could you talk about the fundamental differences that you had? With Look, no, no, no. This, this is an issue that I can seriously is really uh, something we dealt with before. I want to discuss the substance and not personality issues. Is it clear but to you that now that Mr. Karzai has won the election? Uh, no. Uh, the situation is that we have to, f we have to finalize the whole uh, audit process that we now have underway. As you know, the, 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 the ballot boxes that are needed for that audit will be brought to Kabul. Uh, that will enable us to do it in a consistent manner, a transparent manner, and to do it quickly. So that should a second run be necessary, we can do it before winter sets in. Sorry. Of course, you know, of secret chats with Taliban. Do you think it's true? Sorry? There are some reports of, you know, negotiation with Taliban. I, I, I've seen these reports and I've heard it before. And uh, with regard to my contacts uh, or non contacts with the Taliban uh, representatives, I have said before and I say again, I have neither. I have, no, I have no comments to them and will no, not have any comments in the future. Do you really believe there's a military solution in Afghanistan I've or said ultimately it's a political solution? I said over and over again, it is not a, a military solution. There has to be primarily a political solution. Should the Taliban be included in talks? Must they be included in talks? Uh, I've, I've, I've said that also over and over again. Yes, there has to be some kind of peace process which includes the Taliban. And I've gone further than that. I've said that that peace process, that peace process has to include not only Taliban representatives on the ground, but I believe it also has to include the uh, Taliban superstructure. But in the meantime, you want more troops, even though you want to put I said that, military solution. I said that you need, you need to build up the Afghan army and the police. I think the, the, a peace process is not a substitute for other elements. It's an integral part of an overall uh, of an overall um, uh, strategy that we have to have. For me, it's always been since I took on this job, and it continues to be. Well, more NATO combat troops would not be helpful. I have not commented on that. You see, I've, 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 I've not commented on that, and I said I wouldn't comment on that. I said what we need is for police and army training. What do you think? That is up to the military to define. So you're the one who's calling for them. Do you have a number but in I, mind, roughly? No, I don't. Uh, I think what we what we need to see first now is a decision to increase the police from where it stands today, around 80,000, to around 140,000. I believe that's required urgently. I hope we can make that decision sometime this autumn. That will, by necessity, require trainers, police, and uh, also some, some uh, military to not only train them, and to, but to mentor them. The same with the army. It has to be built up, made stronger than it is today. But the number, now I'm not a military man, uh, and uh, I think uh, it's up to the military to come up with their requirements before I make my comments. And so far, they haven't made any such requirements. You mentioned that public opinion is shaped around kitchen tables, and it seems like public opinion around the world is increasingly against the intervention in Afghanistan. Do you feel that threatens your mission or the mission at large? I think uh, the increasing debate you've seen in many Western countries today about their engagement in Afghanistan is a reason for concern and should be a reason for concern for, for a future Afghan government. That's why I say also that we really need a change of mindset, not only on the international side, but from the Afghan government. And the priority for me is to see that the future government can conclude this kind of compact between the government and people and lead them closer together, which means the Afghan government has to, uh, has to come closer to the concerns of its people. I think, I think that, that is where I see the link. If public opinion in Western countries see that that link between the Afghan government and people is not there, then the support given by the public